it's infrequent that the general public has an opportunity to glimpse the private quarters of the White House. But every so often there's a television interview and, and the cameras get to go behind the scenes. And I was watching one of Betty Ford that she gave for 60 Minutes. And she was very frank about her life in the White House. Uh, and she really scandalized a lot of people when she spoke about uh, her children, the possibility that they had had premarital sex. She was very open about the ERA. Um, and then when she was diagnosed with breast cancer, she was very open about that. And these first interviews that came out from the private quarters, from the family spaces, really helped to personalize her. And she was able to make a connection with the American people. Betty Ford is an extraordinary example of um, a first lady using her platform to create such incredible change uh, in our country. When she went public with a very private disease, think about it, 1974, she had been uh, first lady for just over six weeks, and it was less than two months, and she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Really, the word breast was not mentioned in public uh, by women, and certainly the stigma of breast cancer impacted women's health and the way they were treated, the way it was diagnosed, the way it was handled. Her going very public with her mastectomy and her recovery and allowing herself to even be photographed, you know, at Bethesda Naval uh, Hospital in her hospital room with her husband and Bob Hope, who had come, you know, to visit her. Um, that was such bravery and courage um, to share that with the American people and particularly women. And she changed the nature of and the face of how women's health really was handled from that period forward. Um, so it, extraordinary implications um, for her forthrightness, uh, her courage, her candor, uh, and the, she was just very real in the things that she cared about. Yes, the, the ERA, care about, she was the mother of a, you know, of teenagers in the White House and attuned with sort of the shifting social changes going on in our country. So that may have been shocking to some, but with Betty Ford, what she had to say is what people needed to hear. And I think throughout her whole life, uh, she shared her experiences and personal challenges um, to help people. And in fact, you know, when she died in President Obama's comments about her, about her being courageous to talk about substance abuse and addiction and how that um, changed our country as well on how we handle uh, respond to and and treat people with these diseases. So um, she's a, a wonderful activist, first lady, but also a wonderful mother and an incredibly supportive wife to um, her husband and did everything she could um, to help him and, and really was a fierce campaigner for him in 1976 when he was running for election, uh, his first election, of course, as president. And um, People do think to this day that if she'd been deployed even a little bit more um, to Ohio and uh, other states, it might have had a different result in the 1976 election that Jimmy Carter won because that was a very close election. So we have a number of campaign buttons in the exhibition. These, these little mini portraits that you could wear on your lapel, on your sweater to show, you know, to speak for you without actually having to open your mouth who you supported. And the ones of first ladies, as opposed to the ones of presidents, you know, really speak to the way that the, the first lady had become a kind of a running mate. Um, you know, Betty for first lady, you know, for Betty Ford. Uh, and thinking about the ways that um, first ladies either were not, you know, that visible in their husband's campaigns or more recently really becoming a, a you know, a serious asset for them. Well, that's true. And starting, you know, really with uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, you know, who really spoke at a Democratic National Convention um, for her husband. Barbara Bush in later years was the first to really deliver a keynote address 
at a, at a convention. First ladies, although they are not the elected official or running for office, they are, you know, seen as a partner uh, to the president. And they are often the ones it, that their images or their interviews or um, their public, you know, remarks convey another side of the of the president and um, the the partnership, you know, between them. And so they can sometimes be more, even more popular than the candidate uh, themselves, and and that that's fair, but also understandable in the fact that you know all the responsibilities and difficult decisions uh, fall upon a president of the United States, where a first lady gets to pick and choose how she wants to deploy her influence and, and how she wants to be uh, public or and active. And uh, people connect with that. They connect with the human side of the spouse and the president.